the failures kind of outshine the successes. And I feel as a, a, a technology leader, you know, it's my responsibility here and, and, and wherever I go to, to really, you know, focus in on those successes. You know, the challenge is really relaying the passion because the passion is inside me and I, I want to share the vision for what I see for IT. I think it's exciting and, and, and importantly, you know, there's an opportunity to grow not only as a technologist, but to grow as a person and, and to never really lose sight of the end goal. here with Rob DeGracia, CTO of Briegel Investments. Briegel is an international private equity firm focused on long-term sustainable value creation. Rob is a hands-on infrastructure technology leader with an eye for cultivating tech strategy in the financial services space, and I am thankful to have him on with us today. Rob, thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, I'd love to, to be here. Thanks for having me. So could you just start by telling us more about Briegel, your role, and any previous experiences that led you there? Yeah, sure. I just want to say, you know, these are views that I express on my own and they're not on behalf of Brigal. Um, like Lisa mentioned, I'm the chief technology officer at Brigal. We're a private equity firm. Um, you know, my experience, I've been in this industry for 20 plus years, so two decades, mostly in the hedge fund industry. Um, you know, most of my experience is around uh, architecting solutions, engineering solutions, uh, and really being in the weeds with a lot of the systems that you see today. Um, you know, most recently, my most recent roles have been around IT strategy, um, you know, having a seat at the table, and really providing IT direction um, for organizations, as well as managing cyber security operations and, and, and information security programs. So, Rob, candidates today, we know especially want to see that they're going to have the ability to really learn and grow in and both beyond their role. Um, what does Brigal do to help take employees to the next level in their careers? Yeah, so, so that's a really good question. And, you know, the way I think about, well, let me start here. I think, you know, all things surrounding development, coaching, being a player coach, um, additional education and training. I think all of that stuff is core to development. Um, mm -hmm. But when I think about technology, it's a very unforgiving profession. Um, <laughs> I kind of equate it to being, you know, kind of like an electrical company. Like in the Middle <laughs> East, we use PSEG and Con Ed. Like I never call up PSEG and say, hey, thank you for having my life <laughs> on for three days. Like that's <laughs> never happens like 0.5 percent probability so like next to nil but when the power goes out who's the first to call right and then most of the time i'm not happy but the point is you know in technology we're taught to provide availability you know email's got to be up i've got to be able to plug into the network and and, and perform right so you know it the the failures kind of outshine the successes and i feel as a, a technology leader, you know, it's my responsibility here and, and, and wherever I go to, to really, you know, focus in on those successes and, 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 and have the IT team members share in those successes and make them realize that they're part of that success. Um, so, you know, it's, it's how that relates to training. If, you know, I'm, I'm happy to send, you know, one of my team members to, you know, a, a five day work from home training course where they can kind of self work. That's great. It's valuable. But in contrast, what I'd rather see is taking that applied knowledge and having them, you know, build something and own a project, um, you know, saying to somebody, hey, here's a blueprint to, to, to build a, a Tesla Model 3, you know, go build it. Right. And I'll provide the guidance there and the technical skills that they develop in the process, obviously, are there because they're going to be live, breathe and sleep the technology, but also all the soft skills like ownership and empowerment, creativity, and I expect them to fail, which is fine, right? Mm. They'll have their lessons learned. Um, but within the organization, they get to collaborate and, and, and experiment. And, and I think that is, is really, really uh, important. 
Rob, I appreciate that perspective so much. And I do love the PSEG <laughs> analogy as well. I think that creates a great picture for what you guys might experience behind the scenes. So from your experience working in tech for years, what do you think the type, what is the type of culture that you believe prospective candidates want to see within a tech department? And how have you kind of seen team dynamics and culture shifts over the past few years? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good question. And, you know, I'll start with sort of the, the branding part of it. And, 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 you know, a lot of this is fresh because we just re recruited for a role here at Bagal. You know, uh, what I like to say in the recruitment process, and I like to be frank and, 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 you know, the challenge is really relaying the passion because the passion is inside me. And I, I want to share the vision for what I see for IT. I think it's exciting. And I have this, you know, kind of Van Gogh picture in my head of what I want to relate to the candidate. But, you know, in kind of connecting with them, I, I always say, um, you know, I want to be the best boss that you've ever had. And I want to be a relentless advocate for what you're trying to do. And, and I hope I really hope that that resonates with candidates because. Yeah. In my 20 years, no one has ever said that to me. <laughs> People think today, right? And and I, I just think that that's um, that's important. Um, you know, I I really believe in the in the art of storytelling when when communicating with team members. And, and mm -hmm. you know, in my years in the industry, you know, I I started out in, in not really a glamorous position. I was on the help desk for like seven eight years. So you know, doing a lot of the grunt work, which was great because I was the frontline guy and I was able to kind of build technically. Um, but there were, you know, often some bleak times where I didn't know, you know, where my career was headed. Um, I didn't have that guiding voice to kind of coach me through these, 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 you know, my career path and presenting a roadmap to say, Hey, what you are today is not going to be what you are tomorrow and really provide a vision of that end goal. So, you know, the, the summary is really, you know, we want to exhibit a very supportive culture where people know that there's an opportunity and, and importantly, you know, there's an opportunity to grow not only as a technologist, but to grow as a person and, and to never really lose sight of the end goal. I think that's one of the biggest things people are looking for in their work today, to be able to grow intellectually in their trade, but also be able to grow personally. So I think that's a phenomenal piece of advice. So I was reading an article the other day that said 41% of CTOs say hiring is a concern for them right now. What do you believe are the top challenges, top hiring challenges facing CTOs in 2022? And what's your advice for where companies should start with facing these issues? Yeah, another really important one. I think, you know, you know, hiring women has been a real challenge. And, mm -hmm. you know, to give you an example, you know, for a recent role that I had at Regal, you know, I went to market with recruiters and or with, a, with a subset of recruiters. And I said, hey, you know, please present, you know, of the, of the 20 candidates that you're bringing back, you know, of 50 percent, please represent um, women candidates. And, you know, we were all excited and they were all positive. I was like, yes, this is a great opportunity to address DEI on my team. Um, guess how many they, they, they actually came back with? Goose eggs. It, it, it was surprising. And, and you know, it's, it's indicative, I think, of a systemic problem that goes beyond recruiting. And, and I, I don't necessarily have those answers, but I believe that we need to have those conversations. You know, I'm part of an, uh, a CTO uh, community peer network where we often have conversations around DEI and, and you know, it's a male dominated group of technologists, right? And, you know, one of the questions that we, we talk about is how do we include women um, as members of our, of our group, right? But knowing that the majority of our community are, are, are men, you know, how do we comfortably ask them to contribute and how do we you know, not kind of provide this spotlight where they're the lone spokesperson of the group. Um, I think those are those are kind of the challenges that that we face. You know, what one small note. You know, this morning on LinkedIn, um, I posted a note <clears throat> to my community or my network, hopefully beyond my network, and I extended um, kind of a you know an offering of sorts. So, hey, any women that are interested in, you know, infrastructure or cybersecurity that need uh, or want to connect on a, you know, mentorship or, or guidance level or just need some sort of advice, 
um, please connect with me. So um, that's out there for, for, for anyone looking to kind of peer up. Um, you know, there's no real financial incentive for me. I just want to, you know, learn and, and, and yeah. really extend, you know, the advice that I could possibly help help out. Yeah. Rob, thank you so much for shedding light on that issue. And the last question for you, at Solvable, we're all about what drives purpose and meaning for people at work. So I'd love to know what drives purpose and meaning for you at work. Yeah, you know, this is, it always comes down to, you know, um, waking up in the morning and, and feeling good about your day to day, but also, you know, I mentioned earlier on in our conversation about like the end goal. And the end goal for me has always been technology at the roots and how we can help people and how technology can be impactful in our lives. You know, when I think about, you know, a recent example of, you know, the, the, the pandemic, for instance, right? You know, my parents are 80, 85 years old, um, you know, some preconditions. And um, when the pandemic first started, it was just impossible to get these, these uh, appointments for vaccines, for vaccination very confusing and you go to the government website and there's just like no availability and you know they they kind of asked for my help and and I was you know kind of in the same rut as them just hitting F5 refresh on these sites not coming up with any availability at all um so I was very distraught you know so so what happened was that you know I listened to a podcast and um from the New York Times and and a, a programmer you know at the kindness of his of his heart you know, no incentive financially. He had a full-time job, came out with this algorithm web crawler, which went out to all these websites and looked for availability. And, you know, lo and behold, the next day I found an appointment for my father. So, you know, the argument can be made that he's saving lives, right? And that's kind of what technology does. And, and it's just a really, really great field if you want to contribute. Um, because you know it's 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 just ever evolving and it's just going to be so dynamic from from tomorrow to five years to ten years in the future. Rob, thank you so much for being on with us today, and thank you all for listening to Architects of Contemporary Hiring. Thank you.